Hello everyone, uh, my name is Russell Lowe, I'm a senior lecturer at the University of New South Wales teaching in the Faculty of the Built Environment, uh, teaching in the Architecture Program in fact. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to take a model from Google SketchUp um, via the PlayUp tools um, into uh, Crisis, uh, into the Sandbox Editor to um, make uh, the same object available on a crisis level. So first thing you need to do is run the play up tools. Uh, I've already done that and uh, you simply follow the prompts. It's pretty straightforward. Um, this is a model I've made, <laughs> awesome model I've made in uh, SketchUp but it'll do for uh, demonstration purposes. Uh, if we go into the plugins um, tab we can see play up and you go into preferences. Um, select Crytek CryEngine 2 out of that list and go into the CryEngine 2 settings. Um, you can see I'm running uh, Windows 7 so I've got this program files x86 but you've already installed the uh, Crisis uh, SDK and that installed in the Electronic Arts, Crytek, Crisis Wars, Game, Game Objects. Uh, uh, you might not have an Objects folder so you'll need to create one and then inside that this is for Arch1101 students. Uh, just use your student ID and then underscore and objects. Don't put any spaces or any um, strange characters like hashes or uh, commas or full stops or anything in that name. No spaces either. Um, the RC path is the same as what's usually is given here by standard, um, but instead of being in Crisis, we're using Crisis Wars. So you need to browse into your Crytek Crisis Wars. 32 RC, RCEXE and select that and then go save, tells you that saved, saved and then you can close that and you're ready to go. Um, so I've got this model that is, um, uh, like I say, pretty simple uh, and it's untextured at the moment. So we need to create a texture for it. Um, so open up the, the new materials um, slot, hit, hit create material and you can see it here, use texture image and I'm going to grab just this one that I've got on the desktop go OK, it's a JPEG, uh, JPEGs and TIFFs work I'm going to change that to 1 meter square so it's a good size um, this uh, pixel resolution is 1024 by 1024 pixels uh, it turns out you can use any kind of dimension that you like um, but the bigger it is the slower your machine will run um, but I would recommend using uh, pixels with the dimensions um, of powers of 2 so 128 by 128, 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024 those sorts of things, it works faster that way uh, that's a computer game thing uh, so hit OK and we've got a texture on here hit spacebar, triple click that to select it all grab the texture and apply it to that surface and you can see it's quite small so what we can do, hit spacebar again, select that one surface, right click and go texture, position, sorry that went off the window I think uh, and you can drag this around so now we can see that that image is a little bit bigger on that surface um, I'll quickly do it to here too, right click on there, go texture, position, grab a little green one and make it on an angle if you like Right, so now that's all done, um, triple click on that, right click on it and go make component. You need to be careful of this uh, component name just like uh, the folder set up before. You're going to name this um, something sensible, maybe, uh, maybe your name in there so we'll call it Russell uh, Test 01, there's probably going to be a few more. I may have that already in use, uh, that will be fine. Create, so now I've created this piece of geometry. If I right click on it, uh, let me right click up here a little bit, yeah that's better. Uh, play up properties, enable collisions so we can bump into it in the game and right click again, play up properties and export selected geometry. It says it's converting that image to a um, TIFF and it's gone and put it into our um, objects folder inside of crisis so I just opened up crisis and you can see if I open up the brush we'll go down here to uh, I'll have to re 
reload this. When I reload it, Z, there's my student number and staff number in my case, and objects folder. Double click on that, there's an object, click and drag it into the environment. Use S to go backwards, that's a good size. Uh, hit the 2 key, allows you to rotate it. Uh, the 1 key allows you to move it. It's kind of nice, is hold down shift and control at the same time and it'll snap to there. What I might do is just drop it down there so I can get onto it. Uh, another thing that I'll do is um, change it in the um, brush parameters, change that to cast shadow maps and you can see it casts some nice shadows. Actually I'll change the time of day. to there. Actually while I'm at it, if you want to, this is showing a flat line and it's pretty dull, uh, pretty dull lighting. So what I'll do is import from file, click on here and navigate to the Crossus Walls folder and go into the editor folder and you can see there's a default time of day dot TOD. Use that and it gives you this shape which gives you some kind of nice um, uh, effects as well as stars at night. I have to see the shadows on this thing, isn't it? Um, you can see the shadows around this side. And those will change pretty um, pretty speedily when we do the time of day. So, get closer to the ground, right click, uh, sorry, control G to drop in, and then uh, hit the, oop, I don't want to hit the 1 key, that brings up a gun. But if I hit the uh, F1 key, it'll bring my avatar up and I can actually see that I'm running around inside this thing and bumping into it. Which is kind of nice. Uh, you'll see a man in a wetsuit, actually a nano suit, and uh, I have a custom character because I've been doing some other modifications um, to Crisis and a nurse was far more appropriate than a guy in a nano suit. Um, so that's enough for today. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.